On 11th March 2011, an earthquake measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale took place 130 kilometers off the coast of Japan. Within an hour, a tsunami of unprecedented magnitude struck Japan, the tidal wave of water and mud cutting a swath of death and destruction through the coastal areas of Japan. Despite the Tokyo Electric and Power Company's denials, there are reports to show that the Fukushima Daiichi 1 nuclear plant was first damaged in the earthquake preceding the tsunami. However, the three running reactors, Daiichi 1, 2 and 3, had shut down safely and the other three reactors, Daiichi 4, 5 and 6, were already in a cold shutdown mode. A 14-meter tsunami struck the Daiichi 1 plant, taking out the backup generators and starting the cascading train of events that saw explosions in reactor buildings 1, 3 and 4 and partial core meltdown in 1, 2 and 3. Even a reactor that is shut down releases enormous amounts of heat and needs the cooling systems to work. With electrical backup systems not available, the inability to cool the reactor core meant extremely high temperatures, leading to the release of hydrogen, formed as the hot fuel rods reacted with the water and steam inside the reactor. The primary containment vessel was breached, leading to release of radioactivity and hydrogen into the atmosphere. The hydrogen eventually ignited in the reactor building, causing the explosions in Units 1, 3 and 4, blowing off the roof of the secondary containment buildings. An area of 20 km radius had to be evacuated with people in the 20 to 30 km radius being told to be prepared to move out of the area. The incident could have been much bigger if the plant superintendent, Masao Yoshida, had not disregarded the TEPCO management's instructions to stop pumping seawater into the reactors. At one point, the fate of the plant and all of the nearby areas hung in balance as the workers and engineers battled with the runaway reactions in the reactors and, and the stored fuel ponds. Rebuild Japan Initiative Foundation released a recent 420-page report with independent experts showing how TEPCO at one point wanted to abandon Daiichi, which would have led to a demonic scenario, a large-scale release of radioactivity causing other nuclear plants to fail and the possible evacuation of Tokyo. Only direct orders from the then Prime Minister, Naoto Kan, had prevented TEPCO from abandoning the plant and having the Fukushima disaster spiral completely out of control. TEPCO has managed to execute a cold shutdown of the three stricken reactors, make sure cooling systems are now working and all systems are currently stable. Now, the world's three major nuclear incidents are at the Three Mile Island, which had INS level of 5, Fukushima and Chernobyl, both of which had INS levels of 7. It will take 10 years to seal the site and prevent radioactive leakages to the surrounding areas. Decontamination will require topsoil to be removed from an area of over 2,400 square kilometers. A 3 kilometer radius will permanently have to be abandoned, much like Chernobyl's immediate surroundings. The plant itself will take a minimum of 40 years to be decommissioned. It may either be entombed in cement like Chernobyl after all the fuel rods have been taken out, or the reactor cores could be removed and the reactor buildings dismantled, transporting all of this to a radioactive waste storage facility. The cost of Fukushima is estimated to be $52 billion already and only projected to rise as the costly process of decontamination and decommissioning is undertaken. It's still unclear how much of this will be borne by TEPCO, the operating company, the insurance companies, and how much will actually be shelled out by the Japanese people through their government underwriting some of the expenses. Joining me to discuss the issue of Fukushima is Prabir Purkaista of the Delhi Science Forum. Welcome, Prabir. Now, it's one year after the Fukushima incident. What has been the impact of the accident in Japan, given that Japan has more than 54 reactors and actually produces more than 20% of its energy needs from nuclear power? You know, there are two impacts that we need to really look at. One is that out of the 54 reactors, almost all of them are now shut down. Only about three or four are working. A lot of them have been shut down because stress tests have to be conducted, safety measures have to be re-examined, particularly in light of the kind of failures that have taken place in Fukushima. So that's one round of impact that is taking place, that most of the nuclear energy today in Japan is off the grid. It is probably going to come back to the grid, but it's also possible that at least the older plants will be completely taken out, that they will not be allowed to run, particularly those which are the old Mark 1G reactors of the Fukushima vintage, which had already crossed 40 years of their life. Mm -hmm. I think that is unlikely to come back again after what we have seen in Fukushima. So that's one part of it. And the bigger issue is that Japan, which was already very gung-ho about nuclear energy, also was looking at nuclear energy for a possible low carbon path, has gone off Kyoto protocols, have decided that it will keep the carbon emissions, 
emissions because it's, there is no easy way for it now to reduce carbon emissions without taking nuclear energy as a major source of energy. So there is a re-evaluation and there is a strong move in certain circles in Japan to go off nuclear energy altogether. That means now carve out a path which will not be with nuclear energy in the foreseeable future. But the problem with that path is Japan has very little resource of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. It does not have any fossil fuel resources of its own and oil, if it has to substitute or gas, is going to be a very expensive solution for Japan. So I think Japan has a real problem on its hands, how to do a low carbon path without nuclear energy and that's a problem that really will have need to, that they'll have to really address. Praveen, what about the rest of the world? Before Fush Fukushima, there was a talk of a nuclear renaissance, nuclear energy being a substitute for uh, fossil fuels and so on. Do you think that, that there is a worldwide revaluation re of the use of nuclear energy after Fukushima? I think there's no question that instead of nuclear renaissance, we might just be having the nuclear chill coming in with Fukushima. So there is a slowing down of the nuclear programs in lots of countries. Germany has gone off nuclear altogether. Other countries like Italy, which were thinking of again getting to nuclear energy, have stopped their programs. Belgium has stopped. So there is a set of countries who have gone off nuclear energy altogether, not very many, but there are a certain numbers which have gone off nuclear energy altogether or have said they will phase nuclear energy out completely. As I said, Japan is sort of thinking either way. It's not very clear at the moment which way Japan will go. The question is twofold. One is what happens to the old nuclear plants which have to be phased out in the next 10-15 years. Mm -hmm. This is in US. It's in uh, UK because the bulk of the 450 nuclear reactors in the world today are actually very old plants, mm -hmm. aging plants. So what will be the replacement? Will it be nuclear or will it be something else? I think it's a big question. There's no issue that nuclear has had a big setback. Fukushima is one reason for it. But also the fact that nuclear energy costs have risen quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So in the, what are the drivers? of nuclear people not going to nuclear energy is its very large cost and the large gestation of nuclear plants and that itself had become a damper even before Fukushima came into effect. So I think nuclear energy programs all over the world are slowing down and there's no question about it. The only ones which still seem to be gung-ho about nuclear energy, one is India which doesn't seem to have changed its policy mm -hmm. at all and the other is China where about 100 more nuclear reactors are in the offing. But again, China has taken a decision to stop all new nuclear reactors spending their recalibration, as you put it, of the nuclear safety programs. And only what they're going ahead is the pro all the nuclear reactors, which already they had already started construction. Only they are going ahead with that. All others they have put currently under hold, pending safety reevaluation. Now, what has actually been the reaction in India, both on the ground and amongst government circles? I mean, are the problems, for example, in Jaitapur and Kurankulam, at least partially due to the impact of Fukushima? And separately, I mean, don't you think that it is necessary for both India and China, given that they are developing at such a rate, to concentrate on any and all sources of energy available to them? I think, again, there, is, there are two parts to this question. Mm -hmm. One part is very simple that if you're living near a nuclear plant anywhere in the world, after Fukushima, you'll be far more concerned mm -hmm. than you would have been before. Let's face it, the 20 kilometer radius around Fukushima is something that probably will be out of bounds for the next 20, 30, 40 years. We don't know how long it will take to clear it up. Right. The three kilometer radius around uh, Fukushima is going to be completely evacuated mm -hmm. forever. Nobody is going to be allowed to settle for the foreseeable future. So obviously, if you're really next to a nuclear plant, you are going to be concerned about what would happen in the next 40 years if an accident takes place. So I think sure. that is something which obviously is reason. Mm -hmm. <clears> that <throat> A lot of people in Jaitapur and Kudankulam are worried about what would happen to the nuclear plants, how safe they are, and what its impact could be if there is an accident on them. So that has obviously been a reason why nuclear plants are coming into opposition. I think the other issue which I, people haven't seemed to have realized, and this is more of the nuclear establishment, putting six of the three reactors in one place is really asking for more trouble because one of the reasons that happened was that Daiichi Unit 1 blew up mm -hmm. and it caused the crisis in all the other in units the immediately mm -hmm. because then, then trying to maintain the safety of these reactors become very difficult. At one point, the TEPCO wanted to withdraw from Daiichi and if that had happened, then there was a possibility of 
Daiichi blowing up, nearby nuclear plants also getting affected and blowing up, and finally even the possibility of Tokyo being evacuated. Mm -hmm. So we talk of huge issues if such an accident takes place. So it's not surprising that people would react negatively to a nuclear plant so coming So is up. the issue then largely of where the nuclear plants are placed? You know, it's very difficult to find a place in India where you get lots of water, mm -hmm. even if it is seawater, and empty land. So that's a very unlikely scenario of finding such space, particularly India, which is such a densely populated country. So I think we are going to see opposition to nuclear plants on the ground unless we take measures to have credible safety uh, regulatory agencies work whose work is transparent, people can actually talk about what the nuclear energy safety systems are. There is an open debate on these issues and people are taken into confidence. At the moment, one of the problems we have in India is the safety regulatory agencies, which is the Atomic Energy mm -hmm. Regulatory Board, even its safety audits, even if we look at what the past chairman of the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, Dr. Gopalakrishnan has been saying, are kept secret. So we do not know, and these are civilian reactors. We are not talking of only the you know military uh, reactors. We talk of civilian reactors, which is only for producing nuclear energy. And yet, whatever measures Atomic Energy Regulatory Board took in terms of safety, what it said, it uh, safety changes it had to carry out, is even today secret. Now those are the kind of things which make people far more worry of nuclear mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. You asked a question about what about nuclear energy mix. Let's put it this way. The energy mix is an economic issue, it's not only a safety issue. And economically, we'll have to see whether nuclear power is economically competitive with other forms of power. And there, if it has a place, certainly an investment to keep nuclear power alive should be kept. Mm -hmm. But looking at the cost economics today, looking at the cost of nuclear energy, I would say that investment really should not be very large, given the fact that it is much more expensive, particularly if we import nuclear reactors as we are planning to do both the Arriva reactor or the Westinghouse reactor or the G reactor, all of them are pretty expensive. So what would you think are more cost-effective measures of meeting our energy needs and how can the government go about convincing people either that nuclear energy is what the country really requires or else that we do have viable alternatives? I think we should have a mix of energy. It's not a question of only one or the other. Mm -hmm. In this, I think coal for the near future should still be the dominant fuel, slowly changing over to renewables as and when the cost comes down. So I think that's one, one line of energy development we should take up. As far as nuclear energy is concerned, I think it's still a relatively expensive proposition if we import nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. Indigenous reactors are much cheaper. They're also much smaller. Therefore, the risks effectively are also lower. Mm -hmm. So I think what we should really look at smaller reactors, what are called small modular reactors, mm -hmm. look at safer design, more passive designs, and move away from the kind of reactors which today are going, which are in the world, which seem to be having much more problems, particularly the 1100, 1200, 1300, 1600 megawatt, very large complex reactor systems that we are building, where the risks I don't think are justified by the kind of benefits that we are supposed to get in terms of energy. Thank you, Prabir, for joining us, and thank you for watching NewsClick.